Have you ever known about this book? Yes, it's only Time Deceit by author Liu Liu. Let's take a look at the question in this book. Read boring science articles, clean the house, paint the house, write a paper or reports in a day's work. Which do you choose to do when each task requires you a full day's work? Raise your hand if you're going to clean or paint the house first. My first instinct is to clean up, and you may choose to do the same. If there are people who make writing papers or reading boring science articles a priority, they are in the minority. They are the geeks or geeks. According to Liu Liu, the choice of the vast majority of us is actually industrious laziness. You'd rather be physically tired than mentally tired. You'd rather be seen at work than spend time and effort learning something to real yourself. And this is the so-called pseudo-diligence. Have you had a test next week, and hopefully you are going to study with a stack of materials, only to find a place to play your mobile phone instead? I bought a thick English dictionary with a strong ambition, but eventually it moves to the right position of my bookshelf, abandoned. Or maybe you haven't turned a few pages, and your blog are updated, and you can't wait to turn on Bilibili to watch the video. If the answer is yes, then you fall into the trap of fake diligence. This circle costs us a lot, but little gain. Why is it so easy to fall into a circle of pseudo diligence? Mainly because we are not realizing it. Don't worry. Renowned psychology expert Professor Jordan Peterson has identified four signs of fake diligence. One, spend a lot of time doing the easiest parts of the job and flaunting it. Nothing goes without merit. For example, you have to improve your physics, and you have done lots of exercises but trained to answer directly every time you come across difficulties without carefully thinking and analyze the process. You are only willing to take only one step along the way toward a goal that is comfortable for you. Two, procrastinate in the name of getting ready. Seem busy but do not get anywhere. You don't think twice about buying programming books and learn how to program only to find them sitting in your drawer ever since. Three, never verify the work result. Do not know whether the work is good or bad. Just head down to pull the car. Constantly scan questions. Never analyze the underlying logic. Directly skip a large section of analysis. Four, read many books, but never sum up the rules. Even if the rules are summarized, do not use in practice. You've decided you are going to read 10 books this summer, so you go out of your way to read. Yes, you did. But how much did you really understand? Is the knowledge kept firmly in mind? In fact, most people can be aware of their pseudo diligence through these more main four characteristics. But why are there so many people addicted to it, unable to extricate themselves? Think hard in your mind. Why do you lose to live pseudo diligence? Why do we fake diligence? It can be summarized as the following points. The first is the loss of self-compass. Imagine if you get lost in the desert without compass to identify the direction. Isn't it very dangerous? Self-awareness is the compass of the self. In a nutshell, it's self-evaluation and self-observation. In this day, the easier thing is to do useless work, pseudo-diligence. Do you know a word called moral permission? It means that when we do something, if we think it's good, we feel good. And if we do something not so good, or even we don't do it, there is no psychological burden. I exercised for two hours yesterday. Would the cake and ice cream be too much for today? I've been studying this week. It's OK to reward myself a weekend of playing games. I'm so well prepared for study, and that I could take a short video break. Under this moral permission, we have tasted the sweetness of fake diligence. But we do not know, under the sugar coating, there's a sharp knife hidden, and nothing delicious. And the second is, we always focus on small, unimportant things, but forget big things. People want to be best at everything they do. However, it's easy to do things in a confusion of priorities. Therefore, it is often said, pennywise and pound foolish. I'm going to give a talk next week, and now I have maths and chemistry homework to do which should be the priority. Many people tend to be confused when it 
need to overcome the key and difficult points. And the third is that the information kidnaps us. This is the most important point where people fall into it unconsciously. We are in an age of information explosive. Every morning when you open your mobile phone, all kinds of apps will pop up push information and a variety of explosive titles like the blog you considered has been updated or some common details are on sale. These kinds of advertisements will attract you to clicking and read. A huge amount of information is coming at us. It seems that there must be something important to us. However, how could we be so diligent if we spend much time and energy using useless information? So how can we bid farewell to the diligence and stop wasting time in vain? The first is tune into the initiative. Whatever you do, being active is better than being passive. If you start with a feeling of being forced, you won't get far. I still remember when I was five, the school asked us to do a charity task, and I was asked to sell the newspaper. I wasn't very happy at the beginning because I couldn't watch my cartoon anymore. So I walked on the street unhappily and just sold two pieces of newspapers at the beginning. And my mom told me, why don't you try to do this with a positive attitude? I believe you will do best. And at last, I did it. And I was the first to sell all of the newspapers and won the prize of excellent newspaper kid. When you're on defensive, taking the first step consumes a lot of your energy. It can lead to mental exhaustion, which can lead to illusion that you've done everything to achieve the goal. You've already achieved it. However, this goal is far from the goal you set up to achieve at first. And the second is determine the area and enter the study area. The cognitive world is divided into three zones, the comfort zone, the study zone, and the panic zone. The comfort zone is just like a small mountain, and it can be crossed with a single stride. And the panic zone is, how could it be done? For example, a big mountain towering into clouds has steep, almost vertical slope, and you have to climb it with your bare hands. Yes, without any assistance. Isn't it very dangerous? And the study zone is, the mountain is a bit high, but we can climb it sometime. Similarly, we have to choose appropriate learning area in order to make progress. And the third is, check the learning effects in time and adjust it. Learning effects is not only the result of learning, but also the maintain to enthusiasm and the direction. Here's an example from a book I read recently. A two-year-old kid just beginning to speak might say something like, two plus two makes four. Yes, this statement is absolutely true, but we will mistakenly conclude that the child knows about math. In fact, he has no idea what he was talking about. This is a theory in the shallow, naturally cannot be applied, of course, with the continuous learning of children and the application in life. These points will be solved gradually. If the theory is not learned, it cannot be turned into application. If you want somebody to know about this knowledge, you have to adjust it in practice. Finally, I appreciate your patience and listening. I hope that your deep thinking will bring you new inspiration, and also hope that you can see through these points and step out pseudo-diligent circle. Thank you. <laughs>